Hello friends, welcome back to English with Kayla. This English lesson will teach you 50 very natural and incredibly useful English phrases and idioms. My name's Kayla, I'm an American English teacher and I love teaching you about how native English speakers really use English phrases, words, and of course, idioms. I promise that all of the idioms in today's lesson are ones that I use myself in all sorts of conversations and friendly conversations, professional conversations, and just my everyday conversations. Let's get right into today's lesson and start with some phrases and idioms that have to do with actions or verbs. Under the radar. Have you ever wanted to do something in secret or without being noticed? You are doing it under the radar. Of course, this phrase comes from actually looking at the technology of radar. Radar is used, I believe, in airplanes and submarines to see what other airplanes are in the sky or what other ships are in the water. So if you do something without being noticed, you are doing it under the radar. One of the most common idioms used to ask for help is you can ask someone to give you a hand. Hey, could you give me a hand with this? If you ask for someone to give you a hand, you are asking them to help you. Sometimes we also say this phrase as lend me a hand, meaning can you help me still? If you were moving in your home, and you had to pick up something very heavy, you might say, hey, could you lend me a hand? This is quite heavy. If you are not sure that you can do something, but you're going to try your best, you can say, I'm going to give it the old college try. This is a really interesting English phrase, and it just means that you're going to try your best. It's a fun phrase to use when you're just gonna give it a go. You haven't done it before and you don't think you're gonna do a great job, you give it the old college try. I'm not very good at singing, but when I sing karaoke, I give it the old college try. Maybe you've sang karaoke at a bar or a restaurant before. It's quite fun, but it can be very, very intimidating. If you are beginning something from the very start, you have not worked on it before, you are starting from scratch. If you had a paper due for homework, like an essay, and you hadn't started at all, you might say to your friend, I need to get going. I have to start from scratch tonight. That means you're starting from nothing. But this phrase is used very frequently to say that you are starting from the beginning. You can also make something from scratch. That means you have gone out to the store and bought individual ingredients, or maybe you have a garden that you've grown some of the ingredients in, and you are going to home make food. That is making it from scratch. I personally love to make chocolate chip cookies from scratch. I think it tastes so much better than just buying cookie dough. You can tell someone to take a chill pill. This means not literally taking any sort of medication. You are telling them to relax, to calm down. This phrase can be a little bit rude if you're using it when someone is very angry or very worked up, so be careful with it. But if you're just telling your friend, hey, you need to relax, you can say, could you please take a chill pill or just take a chill pill. Hopefully they can step back and relax and take a deep breath when you tell them to take a chill pill. A similar phrase that is a little bit difficult to explain, so I'll do my best here, is when you tell someone, don't add insult to injury. So this means that you don't want the person to say something to make an already bad situation worse. Don't add insult to injury. You can tell someone don't add insult to injury or you can say that something has just added insult to injury. If you're having a really bad day at work, maybe you were late into the office and you got locked out of your computer, you forgot your password, and then it's lunchtime and you forgot your lunch. You could say this day is so bad and forgetting my lunch just added insult to injury. 
So this phrase just means it made a bad situation worse. I caught you red handed. This phrase means that you have caught someone in the act of doing something bad. It is as if they had red paint on their hands and made handprints all over, leading you to knowing that they committed the crime or they committed a wrongdoing. A really common thing for kids to do is to climb up and reach into the cookie jar, even when their parents have said, hey, no more sweets, no more cookies for today. Maybe if you went into your kitchen and you saw your son or your daughter taking a cookie out of the cookie jar, you could say, I have caught you red-handed, I saw you do it. Hold your horses. Now this is another action that you can tell someone to do. This means to wait, to relax. Stop being so eager. If you haven't noticed in American English especially, we have a ton of idioms and phrases that somehow relate to horses. I don't know why. So maybe if your friend was waiting to use a book that you're reading and you are still trying to finish that book and they say, hey, can I borrow that book? You need to say, hold your horses. I'm not done with this book yet. This just means be patient, wait a little bit longer. Have you ever been in the situation where you are meeting new people for the first time and maybe you have a new class or a new workplace? and you have to have those initial or first conversations to break the ice. This phrase, break the ice, just means that you need to become comfortable and start to get to know people. Oftentimes when we ask people questions that are meant to get to know one another, we call those icebreakers. It can be so awkward to break the ice when you are meeting new people, especially if you are introverted. When I need to go to sleep, I often say, hey, I'm gonna hit the hay. I'll see you in the morning, I've gotta go hit the hay. This just means that you're going to bed. It's a common phrase that we use in the United States to say, I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to hit the hay. And I assume this comes from the idea that mattresses could potentially be made out of hay, especially many, many years ago. When you don't know the answer to a question and just nothing comes into your brain, you can say, I am completely drawing a blank. It's a very polite and very common way to just say, I have no idea, nothing comes into my brain when you ask me that question. Or if you're in a conversation and you want to say, um, I spoke with a girl, but I'm drawing a blank on her name. This means that you can't remember her name, but you can remember the full conversation with her. You're just drawing a blank on a specific piece of information. When you go fishing, you put, of course, bait on the hook to try to catch a fish. Well, this idiom, to take the bait, means that you are trying to get a person to say something or to give you information by kind of asking a question or just saying something that might make them reveal to you what you want to know. So maybe you are trying to figure out some gossip from a friend. You are saying, so how's your relationship with Jeff going? And they just say, it's fine. You say, oh, they did not take the bait on that one. I was trying to find out about their argument or their fight. That's just one example of taking the bait. Another example of this phrase, taking the bait, is when you say something to purposely make someone angry or kind of start talking a lot about a certain topic. When I teach you an English phrase, I want you to know all of the different meanings of it and all of the different ways it's used. I want to cover the bases. This baseball idiom to cover the bases means that you want to, you want to make sure that you haven't forgotten to do anything that will make whatever it is you're doing successful. So in this example, I wanna make sure that you know all the ways that this can be used, this phrase. I'm trying to cover my bases. As a baseball team, will have people playing all the positions on the bases. A phrase that's very similar to covering your bases is to stay on top of something. Oftentimes at work, we get lots of emails, we get lots of phone calls, and sometimes we can forget things or we can miss appointments. If you keep a very good calendar, 
you can stay on top of things. You can make sure that you won't forget anything. So if you want to make sure that you won't forget things or you just want to make sure that you're doing a very good job, you can say, I'm trying to stay on top of things. A compliment that you could give someone to say that they did an excellent job is you can say, you nailed it. So hopefully on this English lesson, I nailed it. I did a really good job. It's similar to the phrase saying, you hit the nail on the head. That means you did a really good job or you answered the question precisely. You got the exact correct answer. So you can say you nailed it or you hit the nail on the head. So now we'll move on to some idioms and phrases that will help you describe things and that are very useful for all types of situations of describing things. If you describe something as an old wives tale, you are saying that it's probably not true it's probably not backed up by scientific research. It's just something that people have been saying for many, many generations. There are tons of old wives tales that will tell you whether your baby is a boy or a girl. But at the end of the day, you really just need to get an ultrasound or a picture of the baby inside of your stomach to know if it's a boy or a girl. An example of an old wives tale would be that baby girls steal their mom's beauty. So during pregnancy, if you feel ugly, you could say that you're having a girl. She's stealing your beauty. Of course, that is not true. It's just an old wives tale. If you want to describe something as being easy and not challenging at all, you can say, well, it's not rocket science. This means that it doesn't take a very advanced skill set or you don't have to have a ton of knowledge to do it like designing a rocket would take a lot of knowledge this is not rocket science this is used to say it's actually quite easy so when you buy furniture from a store and you have to put it together usually you get directions it's not rocket science to put it together but it just takes a little bit of time if you describe somebody as having a heart of gold it means they are very compassionate and they are very loving and very kind. So you can say they have a total heart of gold. They just adopted a boy into their family. This just means they are very compassionate and it's like their heart is made of gold. You might hear an English speaker describe something as selling like hotcakes. Hotcakes are another word for pancakes, which are delicious, of course. So if you say that something is selling like hotcakes, it means that people are buying it really fast and buying a lot of it. If you say something is a far cry from something else, it means that the two things are not closely related or they don't look alike or they don't sound alike. So my singing is a far cry from Adele. It's not good at all. You could also say he's a far cry from a model. He's not very good looking. These are unkind examples, but you get the point. If you want to describe someone as not being trustworthy or not someone that you can trust, you can say, I do not trust them as far as I can throw them. And most of the time you can't actually throw a person because they're so heavy, meaning you don't trust that person very much because you couldn't throw them very far. I personally do not trust cats as far as I could throw them. I think they're a very sneaky animal. So if you want to tell someone that you can't trust them, you can say, I don't trust you as far as I can throw you. It's an idiom, meaning you don't trust them. When you learn a piece of information that just doesn't sound very good to you, it just, it's kind of alarming to you. It, it doesn't sound like it was the right thing to do. You can say, it doesn't sit well with me. Also, you can describe food as it doesn't sit well with you, meaning it upsets your stomach. If you do something infrequently, like less than once a month or less than every about three months, you can say, I only do it once in a blue moon. This is just an idiom to describe something that you don't do frequently or often. If you don't drink often, you could say, I only have a glass of wine once in a blue moon. A way to describe the feeling of having to go to work on Monday after a fun weekend that you really enjoyed and you're not looking forward to work, or you're at work and you're not enjoying it, you can say, I have the Mondays or I have a case of the Mondays. 
That means you have a case of feeling like you don't want to be at work right now. After such a relaxing weekend, it was really hard to go to the office because I had a case of the Mondays. Another really good phrase to describe a feeling like the Mondays that isn't as common, but I really like this phrase is the Sunday scaries. If you dread going to work or going to school or doing whatever you have to do on Monday, you can say, I have the Sunday scaries. That's just that feeling of dread on a Sunday night. I hope that you do not have the Sunday scaries. When you are feeling like you have been victorious, you feel so happy, things are going really well for you, you can say, I feel like I am on top of the world. That just means you feel very superior and very lucky at the moment. I personally really like to exercise and after running, it puts me in a really good mood and I feel on top of the world. If you are angry about something and you're just totally done with the situation, you don't want to deal with it anymore because it angers you so much, you can say, I am at my wits end. This just means that you will not deal with the situation anymore because it makes you angry. I am at my wits end with my neighbors. They are so loud, I can't even sleep at night. We talked about feeling like you're on top of the world. The opposite of this feeling would be, I just can't win, I can't win. The phrase, I can't win, is used when you are feeling like you are just getting the worst outcome out of every situation. This morning, all my clothes were dirty, I got caught in traffic, it rained on me when I was walking into work, I just can't win. If you want to ask someone why they look so sad, you can say, why the long face? A long face would describe someone who's sad. I'm not really sure exactly why we say long face, maybe because your face looks long when you frown. But if you want to ask someone why they look sad, you can ask them, why the long face? If someone leaves you in a bad situation with no good resources, you can say they left me high and dry. So maybe if you were going to a friend's house and they told you that they would feed you lunch, but they actually didn't have any food, you can say, wow, you really left me high and dry. I'm very hungry. This phrase is just used whenever someone leaves you without something that was promised or something that was expected. If you are extremely hungry, a really common phrase to use is that you are so hungry that you could eat a horse. Of course, you could not literally eat a full horse. Horses weigh hundreds of pounds, but American English speakers are always using horse-related idioms to describe things. So if you're extremely hungry, you can just say, I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. Similar to saying you're at your wit's end, you can also say, this is the last straw. Or you can also say, this is the straw that broke the camel's back. This means this is the last thing or situation that I'm going to deal with. I'm really angry at this point and I won't deal with it anymore. So sometimes when people break up in relationships, they say something like, this was the last straw. The last straw or the straw that broke the camel's back was when the other person cheated on me. What a terrible example, but you guys get the picture. The last straw or the straw that broke the camel's back is the situation that made you quit or give up. So these next phrases are used to describe things that teach you a lesson in life, usually a positive lesson. A really common phrase in America is to say it builds character. If something bad has happened to someone or they have to deal with just a lot of hardship, you can say it builds character. Personally, when I had my first job and customers were very rude to me, I worked at a restaurant and the customers would be rude to me sometimes, my mom would say, it builds character. It's good to have a job like this, which I totally agree with her. It does build character. It just means that it makes you a stronger person and it gives you more respect for things if it builds character. Another phrase that describes a lesson that you have to learn is, you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs. This phrase means that it's impossible to achieve something important without making mistakes or having some bad things happen. A situation I think of is when businesses are trying to become more eco-friendly. So maybe they aren't using as much plastic or packaging and people say, 
oh, my product broke because it wasn't shipped with as much packaging. Well, you can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs. Some people are not going to like the change that you're making, but there are going to be some negative things that happen. And of course, omelet is an egg dish that usually has vegetables or meats in it for breakfast. So the idiom's just saying that you can't make something good without a few bad things happening. When you want to tell someone that they shouldn't make a big deal out of something that isn't actually harmful or isn't actually a problem, it's very minor, you can say don't make mountains out of molehills. Molehills would be very small things that moles, like the animals, live in. And obviously a mountain is quite large, so you shouldn't make a small problem into something big by making a big deal or worrying a lot about it. A very common phrase that we tell one another in America is to keep your chin up. Maybe you have a phrase like this in your language as well, but it just means to remain positive in a negative situation. Let's move on to some sayings now that we use so much in English that I want you to know about, so I'm going to include them in this video as well. These are phrases that will be super useful in conversations. If you want to tell someone that you didn't understand what they said or you didn't hear what they said, you can say, I didn't catch that. I didn't catch that means I didn't understand it. I have two phrases that both mean that you should try to achieve something really good, even if it involves a little risk. You can say, go big or go home. Or you can say my favorite phrase, you've got to risk it to get the biscuit. And the second phrase here is not common at all, but I do say it because I think it's kind of a funny phrase. You've got to risk it to get the biscuit. So maybe if you're gambling and you want to bet a lot of money on something, you can say, well, you've got to go big or go home. This just means you've got to try to win a lot or just don't try at all. Or if you're me, you'll say you've got to risk it to get the biscuit. This just means you should risk a lot for a big reward. And of course, this is not always true, so don't always take this advice. If something is getting very close, for instance, again, if it's a sporting game and maybe there's only a few minutes left, you can say it's really down to the wire. That means there's just a small amount of time left. A wire is very thin, so you're describing time as wire in this situation. There's not a lot of it. It's getting down to the wire. That means there's not a lot of time left in a game, or if you have a project or assignment for work due soon, you can say it's really getting down to the wire. I have to finish soon. Another good phrase to use if you don't know the answer while you're speaking, but you could go look it up, is you can say, I don't know it off the top of my head. This means I don't know it in my memory, but I can go look at the information. I know where to find it. I don't know every state capital off the top of my head, but I can just look it up. A really good English saying is to say that you see the light. If you see the light of the situation, it means you understand the truth or the true meaning of the situation. For instance, if you get to know a person and then you find out that they're actually not a very good person, you can say, I really see the light. She is a liar and not very kind. You can also use this phrase in a very positive way too. You could say something like, I really see the light now. I understand why it's so important to eat healthy or some other sort of positive truth or positive message. A really interesting popular English saying is to say that you're missing the forest for the trees. This means that you are not looking at the entire situation or the entire problem while you're trying to solve it because you're looking at small parts of it. So a forest is made up of a lot of trees. So if you say, I can't see the forest because there's a tree in the way, you are looking at the forest, but you're concentrating too hard on the tree. Here is a really kind of gross English saying. It's don't spit in the wind or don't spit into the wind. These mean the same thing. Now, if you spit literally into the wind, it would blow back into your face. So that's just really gross. If you do something with little chance of succeeding or really no point to doing it, it's like spitting in the wind. It just comes back to you. There's no point to doing it. A phrase that I say all of the time is it's easier said than done. If someone gives you advice and it feels like they think it's going to be easy, you can say it's easier said than done. 
For instance, if you have a baby, like myself, and someone says, oh, just go rock the baby to sleep and put him down and then you can sleep at night. I can say that is easier said than done. My baby will wake up and I won't sleep all night. <laughs> that's just a personal example of something that's easier said than done. I'm sure there's tons of examples for this one as well. So I think that doing things to positively affect the environment like recycling or wasting less is really good. If someone told me that you should recycle, it's really good for the earth, I would say you are preaching to the choir. This just means you're telling someone something that they also believe, that they strongly believe. It's like you are preaching a religion to someone who already believes in that religion. Preaching to the choir. If you want to say that something is very easy, you can say it's like fish in a barrel or like shooting fish in a barrel. It's so easy, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Obviously a barrel is a small container, so if you were trying to shoot the fish in there, it'd be quite easy. If you want to describe two things that go together really nicely or that make a good pair, you can say they go hand in hand. One might say that Americans and rock and roll go hand in hand, meaning a lot of American people enjoy rock and roll music. Finally, when it's time to do something that you just have been putting off, dreading, not wanting to do, you can say it's time to bite the bullet. It's time to do something painful, but it has to be done. So in the United States in April, we have to pay our taxes. You can say, I really just have to bite the bullet and pay my taxes. You guys, we made it through 50 idioms, through 50 great phrases that I hope that you can add to your English vocabulary. I promise you these were really everyday phrases that you'll get tons of use out of. Thank you so much for studying with me. I would love if you left me a comment of your favorite phrase that you learned from today's lesson or some ones that you found really useful when speaking with native speakers. I would just love if you subscribed to my channel so that I can teach you English every week with new lessons. Thank you so much for watching and studying with me. Best of luck, I'll see you in the next English lesson. Bye!